I guess the first question is, why did you decide to make the move back from Founders Fund to Coastler again? Well, you know, in some ways, so I spent six years, just so everybody has some context, I spent six years from 2013 to 2019 as an MD at Coastal Ventures. And we had a really successful run together. Uh, mm. KB4, KB5, and KB6 were the funds I was a partner in. And we produced, you know, really stellar returns working as a collaboration team between Vinod, Samir, Cole, David Wyden, and Sven. And um, I never really left in some senses because after I left, I stayed in really significant contact with Vinod, Samir, and David particularly. We co-invested almost every quarter together. So Samir invested and led a financing round in the company I run as CEO in OpenStore. Samir led the Series A for a company that you're familiar with, Trauma. Um, you know, he led the Series A for Mike's company. So we worked together. We worked we worked together there. Uh, I led a growth round from one of Samir's favorite companies called uh, Ultima, Ultima Genomics. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a company I learned a lot about, a founder I knew really well from my days at KB. Samir also led, you know, an investment round in Varda, uh, Delian's company. I worked very closely with David Wyden on a bunch of companies, including Fair, Bungalow, um, so I felt like I was actually seeing more of Samir and David than I did when I was at KB for six years in the last five years at Founders Fund. I, because in, in basically when I was at KB, I would see them every Monday for hours at a time, but I didn't really see them Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we were all go, going meeting with founders, doing one-on-one -on -one with founders, attending board meetings, you know, uh, taking pitches, et cetera. Um, whereas over the last five years, actually, I was working with Samir and David basically every single week. Um, and so some ways, you know, the bridging and bonding got stronger. Um, over the last five years and in the six years where we were just debating at partner meetings. There's certain things about, you know, KB that led to that successful track record uh, at uh, in KB 4, 5, and 6 that I kind of missed. And then there's several personal things that just were more appealing to me as a human, you know, aside from my professional aspirations and goals and ambitions. And so the combination made a lot of sense. The recombination made a lot of sense. Um, I even spoke at the KB CEO Summit you know, last May. Um, so, you know, I, I've stayed in quite close contact with all of the partners at KV. I even helped to recruit Nikita originally to KV. So I'm extremely excited to be able to work with them. You, you said there about kind of the, the things that you missed that were in, inherent in KV4, KV5 and KV6, and then the personal. If we just take those two, what was it that you missed that was kind of central to the success of those funds? So we had very extensive partner meetings every Monday for hours at a time. And we vigorously debated new investments as well as the impact and the potential upside of the current portfolio. These were very unstructured and very vigorous debates, particularly with Vinod and Samir, David, and sometimes Sven. And I felt that they made me a sharper investor, a smarter investor, even though it was ultimately my decision on what to do with the companies that I was championing or the companies that I was on the board of. They made my brain work better by listening to them. And occasionally I made the mistake of over listening, but it was always my mistake. And I felt like I was doing my job better listening to the stereo surround of, you know, Vinod's perspective, Samir's perspective, David's perspective. I even carried it with me to FF in, in my brain for the first year where I could hear their voices. Every time I was thinking about an investment, I hear David whispering about the financials and the calculation of the contribution margin. And I hear Samir talking about certain things about the founder. And I would definitely think about Vinod talking about the option value upside and et cetera, and the team. And we need to get more data science talents in the company. So I was like wandering around with their voices in my head. But I actually think that made me a better investor. And so I missed that. And on the personal side, as you know, KB is significantly branded uh, successfully in the deep tech, hardcore technology investing space. And even though that's not my forte and it's not my comparative advantage in life, I felt I was learning something new about the world every week. So for example, after six years of education, I actually understand at a high level, the innovation in batteries, what's hard. You have the theoretical limits of chemistry and physics at the same time. I learned a lot about robotics. I learned a lot about the fundamentals of AI. I learned about liquid biopsy to detect cancer. I learned about how what's difficult about using CRISPR to actually treat humans. Like what it's mostly the delivery mechanism, for example. I learned so much and I felt like I was becoming broader as a person, even if it didn't really translate to the day-to-day -day investment decisions I was making. 
Uh, so I really missed that. Um, it was like getting a free education in the world of technology every week. And as I was growing up, it's like I could read. I, I read a lot of books. I'm a racist reader. But it was like in um, parallel, I was actually learning by going to partner meetings. And so that was, that was like a free benefit of doing my job. Can I ask, on the, you mentioned the, the Monday partner meetings there and the rigorous debate. That's what kind of we think of with venture partnership discussions. <laughs> that's not the way that Founders Fund structures it? No. Um, Founders Fund, especially when I joined, was very much people running their own investment strategies. Think of it as like a PM running their own investment strategies. And there's a way of syncing and getting a certain number of uh, critical mass and votes to support an investment at different thresholds of dollar figures. But it really wasn't designed for the most part for that kind of analytical rigor. And it, some things have changed over time and there's more of this or more of that. So it's not quite as binary. But KV had the conventional paradigmatic old school partner meetings every week. And they were quite substantive, quite dense. Even the preparation for those meetings on Sunday. Sunday for me used to be when I was the operating executive at, let's say, Square or LinkedIn. Sunday would be the day that I would kind of do brainstorming and strategy, pull out my big, large notebook and kind of redesign org charts and things like that or read. Sunday at KV was a full, dense day of writing substantive memo emails, reading other people's decks and and analysis, I didn't have time to, to let my brain wander at all on Sundays because there was so much preparation that, that was going into each Monday partner meeting. You also didn't have time to do Barry's, my friend. Oh, no, I definitely <laughs> did Barry's. Don't worry about that. <laughs>